Hello, and welcome to the Metro Vision Idea Exchange, Telework in the New Normal for the Denver Region. My name is Kate Hale, and I'm an assistant planner here at the Denver Regional Council of Governments, or Dr. Cog. I'm joined today by Jim Eshelman and Allison Redman, who will be discussing how recent teleworking trends have affected our region and strategies for implementing permanent options for employees. We also have a couple of others on the line from Dr. Cog, including Robert Spots, who is a Mobility Analytics Program Manager. He'll be on hand to address questions during the Q&A portion. Here is our agenda for today. A couple of housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the Dr. Cog website. There will be a brief survey that appears upon exiting the webinar. Please consider taking a moment to respond to that. I have a short set of announcements to run through before I turn the mic over to our speakers. Mark your calendars for Bike to Work Day on September 22nd. Bike to Work Day is an annual event organized by Way2Go that encourages commuters in the Denver region to bike to work, helping them save money on their commutes, improve their health and lower stress levels, all while reducing traffic congestion and improving air quality. Fun fact, Bike to Work Day typically falls on the fourth Wednesday each June, which happens to be today but was rescheduled this year to September due to the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Visit the Bike to Work Day website on the slide to learn more and to pledge to ride. With the generous support of APA Colorado, one AICP credit has been approved for attendees listening to this session live only. You can use the event number on the screen to log your credit on the American Planning Association website. Please note the audio settings location within the GoToWebinar control panel. If you are experiencing audio issues, we do have somebody monitoring the MetroVision Idea Exchange email. That's mvie at drcog.org to assist with troubleshooting. We will accept questions through the questions pane in the control panel. Please submit questions at any time during the event, and we will address them during the Q&A portion at the end. I'll now introduce our speakers. Jim Eshelman will be starting us off. He is an experienced marketing research professional and manager with expertise in study design, research methods, and project management. As management analyst, he manages marketing research and program evaluation at Dr. Cog. He is responsible for designing and managing survey research projects and developing method methodologies to quantify the results and measure the ROI of grant funded projects. He also works on process improvement projects. Allison Redmond will follow Jim to tell us about the work of Telework Tomorrow. Allison is a strategic communications leader with expertise in the transportation industry and over a decade of experience. She currently manages the Way to Go program at Dr. Cog. Way to Go is a regional partnership between Dr. Cog and seven Denver area transportation management associations aimed at improving air quality through reduced traffic congestion. In her current role, Allison is focused on advising employers and commuters about their transportation options with the goal of reducing single occupancy vehicle travel in the Denver region. With that, Jim, I'll hand it off to you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about two different surveys that we conducted um, <clears throat> during the, the COVID outbreak. One was of commuters, and then we used a representative sample of commuters from the Denver area. And we explored uh, things such as mode change during the pandemic, um, people's experiences with telework, the barriers they may have encountered, and uh, pro their, how that changed their productivity or what impact that had on things like that. And then we also talked to employers. Um, we used a sample of employers from the Colorado Society of Human Resource Management. And <clears throat> we talked to employers about how their attitudes toward telework have changed, how they've adapted to telework, and how they see telework in the future. So with that, I'll, we'll move on to the survey results. Uh, before we start the talking about the survey results themselves, um, we'd like to conduct a poll of you in the audience. So the first question we have um, is, how did, your, how did you commute to work on a typical workday prior to stay-at-home orders the closed many work locations. So think of this on the last day that you worked before things were closed, how did you get to work that day? And you can see you have five different options there. If you just select one, we'll talk about the results in a moment.
Okay. Okay, and question number two, uh, how do you anticipate commuting to work on a typical work day as work locations resume operations? So in other words, on the first day that you go back to the office, how do you think you're gonna get there? And again, you have five choices. And if that means that you work at home instead of commuting, you can select that. <clears throat> Okay, um, so I think we'll be able to look at the results. Okay, um, how, did, how did people commute to work uh, prior to the stay-at-home orders? Um, you see a telework rate was about 12%, which was pretty typical from other surveys that we've seen. I think it was about 18% of commuters <clears throat> in general. Uh, the drive alone rate, 69%, which is uh, a little bit lower uh, than the general population, I believe. Buster train, 8%, a little bit higher than the general population, uh, and bicycling and walking, 8%. And 4% used a Lyft, Uber, or a taxi, carpool, or vanpool, which is fairly typical also. So let's look at how people how people are going to commute to work once, uh, once we can go back to work. So as we see... Um, huge number are going to remain continue teleworking 43 percent that's a huge jump and the drive alone rate has gone down substantially uh transits also diminished a little bit and walking and bicycling actually stayed about the same which is kind of similar to what we've seen in other polls bicycling and walking really um people that go to work um that really hasn't changed their choice of that commute that mode okay so there we have it so let's see how the survey results compare to what you just said. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the survey methodology. Um, we surveyed 399 commuters in the Dr. Cog region. Uh, the sample was selected from a panel. It was uh, randomly selected from a panel of commuters that reside in the basically the, the nine county counties that make up the Dr. Cog region. So with that, um, we'll move on to the first first section of the report. So what we, one of the questions we asked was similar to what we just asked you. We asked commuters to tell us how they travel to work during each day during a weird week uh, in March of 2019. And then we asked them a follow-up question um, <clears throat> in April when we conducted the survey of how they, um, how they commuted to work or didn't commute to work last week. Um, and as you can see, uh, substantial decline in driving alone from 63% before to 27% share um, in the a month, typical month of in, during a typical week in April. And telework um, shot up from about 18% of trips to 60%. And you can see a decline in uh, bus and, and transit, bus and train usage, uh, a decline in carpooling and manpooling. Um, but bicycling and walking stayed pretty much the same. Okay, we can go on to the next slide. Um, so what, what has happened with telework? One is a, a dramatic increase in the number of new teleworkers. As you can see, um, most teleworkers had been uh, teleworking for uh, six months or less. And had we conducted this survey, say in January, we would have seen that probably most of these teleworkers would have had substantial experience. So, um, so since these teleworkers are relatively new, um, we want to see how that affected their productivity and and how they perceive telework. So, next slide, please. Um, so, first of all, we'll talk about how it affected the teleworkers themselves. Um, as you can see. Most teleworkers, the majority of teleworkers were either mostly satisfied or very satisfied with working remotely. Um, the smaller, there were small percentages that were dissatisfied and very few that said they were very dissatisfied with telework. Um, <clears throat> and 
And then um, work-life balance. Um, I, I know someone submitted a question about work-life balance, um, but and in regards to that, we can see that um, most teleworkers uh, either see no difference or, or it actually improved. It got better. Next slide, please. Um, most teleworkers um, either preferred to do it all the time or, uh, or they preferred uh, a mix of working remotely and, and, and commuting. Um, which we don't have a slide showing this, but we, we conducted this same survey with the people who had participated in Bike to Work Day about a month earlier. And it was pretty much most of them preferred a mix of working remotely and commuting. So I think as commuter or as teleworkers have a little bit more experience with telework, they tend to shift toward preferring that mode. And I think that's what this slide actually kind of demonstrates to me is that the more you, longer you do it, the more you prefer it. Next slide. Um, telework is likely to remain fairly high after the pandemic ends. As you can see, uh, it's roughly 63% are, like, are likely or very likely to continue working at home at least one day per week after this ends. So, um, so we'll have to think about the implications for that on, on commuting and on mode share and what that will do to uh, traffic congestion in the Denver area. Um, one of the, uh, one of the drawbacks of telework is that, um, teleworkers felt less connected to their colleagues. Um, you can see that about not quite a third saw no difference, but a third were somewhat less connected and, you know, a little under a fourth felt much less connected. So, um, even though people are pretty satisfied with teleworking and they, and they, seem to prefer it they also feel like kind of a disconnect with some of their co-workers their colleagues next slide please um let's talk about the challenges of working remotely and how it affects work um some tasks were easier for teleworkers to do remotely than others um some of the things that were easier to do accessing documents sharing documents um managing time uh, that was those things seem fairly easy. Uh, holding online meetings uh, a little bit more difficult, and then communicating with co-workers um, a little less, a little more difficult. Um, also, okay. Next slide. Um, work quality. Um, most teleworkers just saw basically no change in their work quality, or it actually may have increased a little bit um, from working at home. So that's uh, that bodes well for telework. Next slide, please. Um, meeting deadlines. Uh, that was very positive. Most most teleworkers saw no difference in their ability to meet deadlines working at home compared to the office, and uh, smaller percentages actually say that they're more likely to meet their deadlines. Next slide. Uh, teleworkers perceive that on the whole that uh, productivity probably increased or or stayed the same um and that's very positive uh that's one of the things that employers will definitely look at uh, next slide and what tools we were uh, curious as to what what kind of tools teleworkers were using the most and as you can see um office 365 a lot of usage a lot of zoom usage google drive um, to lesser degree, Skype, WebEx, Google Hangouts, and Slack. But the big three, Google Drive, Zoom, and uh, 365. Um, let's talk about, um, let's go ahead and talk about respondent demographics. Um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, we used a panel of commuters. Um, it, you know, it, it's not a randomly selected group, uh, but we did pick a group of commuters that was um demographically representative of all commuters in the denver region based on census data so i'll talk a little bit about that um, before we move on to the next survey um we represented each of the counties proportionately you can see there that 
basically it matched what the demo what the uh, census data showed latest census data i believe it was from 2018. um next slide uh age um the employed population uh was probably a little bit younger than the, than the people that we surveyed um but still fairly good representation of age groups in the sample next slide and gender a fairly good balance between men and women and next slide occupation uh pretty good representation of people who were um very good candidates for for telework about 69 percent professional managerial supervisory administrative which is and that's fairly representative of the the denver population uh, okay um next slide um we can we can go on past this if you're interested in more talking more about the the uh, survey methodology if you send me an email i'll i'll be happy to answer any questions you have so the next survey um this is a survey of employers and we did this in partnership with the the colorado human resource society of human resource management um they were interested in discovering what they could do to help their members um deal with uh changes in work due to the pandemic and we were interested in telework information so i'll talk a little bit about um how employers you telework and how they're dealing with it. So let's go to the first slide. Uh, telework adoption. 78% um, of the uh, the companies we surveyed um, allowed some degree of telework before the pandemic, uh, and that's jumped up to 95% now. And and as you can see, it's going to go down some. The employers expect that to drop some after people are allowed to go back to work but you can see it's still much higher than it was before which which indicates that there's going to be some long-term shift toward telework um one of the things we wanted to um measure was did actually having some experience with telework change attitudes toward telework and as you can see, 81% of the HR directors and managers that we surveyed said that their senior managers actually viewed telework more favorably than they did before the pandemic, which is incredibly high. And um, supervisory level managers, 73% of our respondents said that their supervisory level managers had a more favorable attitude toward telework, which is also incredibly high. So that seems to indicate that combined with the slide previous slide indicates there's going to be some long-term adoption of telework after this things start to go back toward what used to be normal okay next slide um telework challenges um and this was an open-ended question which we we categorized the responses to because we wanted to see what kind of challenges that employers were facing so the biggest thing was the most thing that was most frequently mentioned was monitoring uh, what employees were doing, what they were working on, what they were finishing, what their deliverables were. Um, and it was not so much because they didn't trust employees or, or you know they wanted to keep track of how they were using their time, but it was managing the workload and allocating the workload among employees they uh, we employers were challenged with um knowing who was overworked and who was maybe could use a little more work um and so that that has a bearing on productivity and meeting deadlines so that's a, that's a challenge that employers um had to overcome uh they found that some jobs just can't be done at home so they couldn't allow all their employees to telework um and then there was uh, definitely then mentioned just as teleworkers themselves mentioned the the connectivity, lack of connectivity in some cases, isolation, um, some decrease in morale. Um, another big thing was employees because probably because of how sudden we had to face this problem um, was employees having home office equipment that was adequate for them to do their work um and then and then to some degree management resistance and culture um and then some of the less uh things that were mentioned less often just communication 
Um, you know, they didn't have guidelines and consistent policies in place, technology, um, particularly when it came to technology for holding meetings and things like that and lack of experience with that technology. And then also accessing files and security of um, files and information. Next slide, please. Okay, benefits and opportunities. And this was also an open-ended question. Uh, the employers that we uh, surveyed or the HR directors and HR managers that we surveyed said the biggest, the biggest um, benefit of telework was it enabled them to continue their business. They didn't have to shut down their business and they could continue to provide a high level of service to their customers. And I think it was roughly 29%, no, 19% of employers um, told us that, you know, without telework, uh, they wouldn't have been able to continue their business at the same level. Um, other company, other respondents told us about how they discovered new possibilities and new ways of doing things, new better ways of doing things. It was almost like this event forced them into, um, in to innovate and and it might not have happened otherwise or might happen have happened at a much slower pace uh they were able to keep their employees safe by keeping them at home uh they also mentioned that employees were actually more productive working at home and um contrary and we also saw this as a disadvantage but some some respondents said that their morale actually became stronger and that the trust bonds with employees actually improved um, and then others mentioned better teamwork, uh, better collaboration and communication among team members and just employees in general. Um, many reduced expenses. In fact, there was one who, uh, one respondent who mentioned that they were thinking about increasing their office space. And with this um, happening, that's no longer an issue that they're not probably not gonna do that. And then some mentioned that um, they were able to reduce the amount of pollution that their employees were, were um, responsible for. Okay, next slide. Um, we, we wanted to know where um, employees needed assistance in adjusting the telework. And a lot of that was for our own marketing reasons because we wanted to be able to deliver a product that would actually help employers. And we wanted to find out where the greatest need was and where we could match up our abilities with um, with what's needed. Um, obviously, you know, based on the response to the previous question, uh, about 34% of uh, employers said that they, they need some assistance with um, having employees report and, and being able to monitor employer productivity. Uh, another thing, um, training supervisors to manage remote employees, about 30% need assistance there. Um, and then also about a quarter uh, mentioned that they needed to develop or update, needed assistance with developing or updating a, a written telework policy. Next slide, please. How prepared are employers for returning to the workplace? So these are some of the things that um, employ the respondents told us that they had done. And probably the most frequently mentioned thing was, They've gotten in the habit of deep cleaning and dis disinfecting or developed a protocol for that, uh, developed a, a self-quarantining and return to work protocol, um, social distancing protocol, and then actually some have put together um, pandemic response teams. Next slide, please. Um, where do employees, employers need uh, assistance with returning to work? Um, where employers felt sort of inadequate or not having um, not having expertise in was just on on-site health screening for employees. Not everybody does this, but um, you'll notice like if you go get a haircut or anything like that now, um, they take your temperature before you walk in. So um, and employers in the workplace, not that all employers want to implement this, but um, a lot of them don't really know how to do the health screening. Um, and they probably need some help there. Um, and then uh, training employees on COVID-19 protocols um, and then also um, training on self-quarantining and returning to work. 
Next slide. So those are our two surveys. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to uh, send me an email and I'll be happy to respond or even I can provide you with more detailed um, a more detailed report of the results also. Okay. And I'll turn it over to Allison and she'll introduce herself and she'll tell you about our Telework Tomorrow program. Thanks, Jim, and thank you to the Metro Vision team for, for having me here today, and thank you all for being here. So I'm going to talk about the Telework Tomorrow program, which is really just taking the information that Jim just shared and turning it into something um, actionable. Next slide, please. So just to start off, what is way to go So way to go is actually a program within Dr. Cog. And as you can see from the map, we partner with seven transportation management associations or TMAs throughout the region. Um, our internal way to go team actually covers the gaps in this map. And then our goal is simple, better air quality in our region. And we aim to achieve that by taking single occupant vehicles off the roads. Next slide, please. So what do we do? How do we do that? Um, events and campaigns. You may have heard about Bike to Work Day. I know there was a shout out um, earlier. So that's a 30,000 person party. That, and really the goal of that event is to give commuters a great chance to bike commute. Um, and this year, again, mark your calendar for September 22nd. It typically does take place in June, but due to current circumstances, uh, we did make the decision to push that back a couple of months. So hopefully you can join us this year. Um, employer outreach and services. This is really our bread and butter activity. Regional employers give us really our biggest bang for the buck, congestion mitigation wise, since folks are traveling to and from work about usually five days a week and largely at peak congestion times. Um, the employee benefits are pretty easy to determine. Uh, healthier commuting options mean less money spent on gas and vehicle expenses, less time to gain traffic, um, less stress. And then we also, um, we run the school pool program, which is basically a carpooling service for kiddos and their parents. Um, the guaranteed ride home program, this is a program that offers participants a ride home in case of unforeseen circumstances. So, you know, if you do decide to carpool or you do decide to take transit to work and the schedule doesn't work for you, in case of an emergency, we make sure that you've got that safety net there. Uh, trip planning, the My Way to Go platform, allows users to plan their trips, including carpool and vanpool buddies. And the platform also helps commuters to see the benefits of commuting outside their personal vehicle, including, as I mentioned, those cost savings, your calories burned, air quality impacts. And we actually just integrated some new air quality measures into the platform, so you really do get a feel for how you are personally affecting our air quality um, when you're choosing those healthier commutes. And so just to just to sort of um, throw this out there, we, we promote choices. The Way to Go program doesn't expect or demand anyone to ditch their car forever, every day, all the time. Um, for example, I have a toddler and there is zero percent chance that she's going to agree to sit on a bus with me. But I do try to carpool whenever I can and, and things like that. So we just want pe people to know that they do have choices and to help them make choices that are better for their health and their wallet and ultimately our air. We like to call ourselves mode agnostic um, because not every commute option is gonna be a fit for every employer or every employee. And so we present employers and their employees with all available choices, and then we help them to navigate those options through education and support. Next slide, please. So we've all read these headlines. Um, commuting has really made a lot of headlines lately. How are people getting around? Are they able to get around? What impact is it having on our cities and our world? Next slide, please. So probably most of us have seen some version of this. Um, this particular image shows China's air pollution levels when you're apart. So the Way to Go program, along with really other every other transportation and commuting organization in the world, really realized that um, while the COVID-19 crisis has been truly devastating, it really has presented us with this unique and totally unprecedented learning opportunity. Um, the impact of keeping cars off the roads is really clear, as you can see from this image. So how could we build on that momentum that was unexpectedly created through this crisis? Next slide, please. 
So just a little background, teleworking had not actually been a main focus of the Way to Go partnership. Um, it's always been an alternative to single occupancy vehicle commuting, but much of our messaging was really focused on carpooling, biking, transit, options like that. But we really quickly realized the need to update and promote our telework messaging. So as the majority of us were suddenly required to telework indefinitely, um, Dr. Cog decided to find out how it was going, as Jim just sort of talked about. Um, we developed a survey in partnership with the Colorado chapter of the Society of Human Resources to find out how Denver region employers are really managing, managing this new work situation and what their future plans were. Um, as Jim mentioned, we mentioned, we received nearly 400 re responses to the survey, and that was largely from senior human resources professionals and executives. And we learned that, um, fortunately, attitudes toward telework at their organizations are overwhelmingly favorable. Next slide, please. And as Jen mentioned, those attitudes are even more favorable today than they were before the COVID-19 outbreak. Based on the survey responses, we do predict that much of the increase in telework that has occurred during this outbreak is expected to be sustained in the coming months. We're also aware that there is a lot of anxiety about commuting options where folks need to be in close quarters. So things like transit or carpool or vanpool. So, for those people who aren't in biking distance or can't or don't want to bike, really what's the alternative to their single occupancy vehicle? Remember, we are focused on providing choices. Next slide. So as you can see, and as Jim mentioned, the perceived benefits to employers are multiple, including business continuity, increased innovation, productivity, morale, safety and security, and lower expenses for employers. Yet despite the fact that large percentages of, of respondents reported having implemented telework training and having developed formal written telework policies, many of them really it still indicated a need for expert advice in both of these areas. Next slide. So teleworking really is new territory for employers and employees. The goal of the Telework Tomorrow program within Way to Go is to provide support and guidance for employers as they make decisions about what their new what their new normal looks like. So this is through what we do best at way to go and that's one-on-one -on -one consulting. And that's actually free one-on-one -on -one consulting. Next slide, please. So we have a toolkit along with the one-on-one -on -one consulting. Um, as you can see on the list, we have a number of resources freely available in addition to those consulting services. So no matter what, whether an employer implements a plan for employees to return physically to an office or whether they continue to recommend or require virtual work, we want to help uh, those employers celebrate their decisions. Again, whatever an employer's situation and whatever they decide to move forward with as their new normal, we can help. And that help is really just providing those choices and that guidance to really make um, smarter and healthier commuting options for their employees. Next slide. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about the Telework Tomorrow program or downloading those resources or reaching out, um, there's my contact information and then make sure to visit the landing page. All those resources are freely available. So if you are interested or if your employer is interested in pursuing um, a formal Telework policy, this would probably re be really helpful for you. And that's all I have today. Thanks. Thank you, Allison. And thank you, Jim. Um, we will now open up questions to the audience. We have plenty of time for um, our Q&A portion. So we have a few that have already come in that we'll start with, but please continue to submit questions through the questions pane. If um, we do run short of time, we'll do our best to provide follow-up to all audience questions. Um, our first question, I'm actually going to um, to address somebody we haven't heard from, Robert Spots, our mobility analyst analytics program manager. Um, the question is, how have volumes and modal patterns of commuting in the Denver metro area been affected by the response to the coronavirus? Thanks for the question. Um, you know, there's, we're still kind of collecting data and obviously changes have affected different areas uh, in different ways. So, you know, downtown Denver in particular was probably hit um, very hard in terms of uh, DMT reductions. Some areas like Commerce City with high 
commercial travel, we're probably less affected. But regionally, regionally speaking, I think we're, we're pretty confident that um, there was about a 50% reduction in what we would consider a normal traffic volumes throughout the region um, during the height of the quarantine. And then we've kind of just slowly, if you could actually scroll down a little bit on that page, you can see we've kind of crept up uh, slowly. We only have data right now through the end of May. Um, it's about, you know, we're, we're about 20% less of what our normal VMT might be or vehicle miles traveled might be. And, uh, you know, it looks like it's still on an upward trend. I don't, I don't know what we're going to get back to. Um, uh, and then go back up to the top chart. And so this one, this one shows over time, over the months, um, those two, two highest lines, the red one and the light blue one, kind of a normal day. And you can see the kind of, this is over the course of a day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. There's peak periods, you can see, where the volume during the a.m. and p.m. rush hour really increases. So we've seen in the, the yellow and the gray line, which is April and late March, we saw a decrease in those overall. But the other important thing to note is there's been a big flattening of those lines. So there's not those big peak increases in volume like we would typically see. And even um, as our midday travel in May is getting back towards normal, there's significantly less of those big increases in peaking. And that is largely due to the uh, amount of people that are still working from home. I mean, obviously traveling less in general, but those people working from home are having a big impact on reducing um, those, those congested times during peak travel periods. Okay, thank you. And if anybody has any follow-up questions for Robert, um, please go ahead and use the questions pane. Um, I'll ask another question to the group um, about work-life balance. How do you effectively balance working from home while still maintaining an, a healthy separation of work and personal life? And um, anybody that wants to jump in, please feel free. So I'll jump in there. Um, I, I'd say the biggest recommendation for that, and, and it's hard, and I think a lot of us are really learning um, how to do that, but if you can um, have a physical separation between where you're working and where you're going about your daily life, that tends to really help. Um, uh, obviously, that's not an option for all of us, but um, but if you can, probably try that. And then also just keeping those hours. So making sure that, you know, just like you would if you're going to a physical work spot and you're working from eight o'clock to five o'clock, make sure that you're really um, respecting those hours for yourself even while you're working at home. Those are the two biggest recommendations I could bring. All right, thank you. Um, we have a question about bringing technology into existing conference rooms. I don't know. Um, how much you guys are kind of in that world, but um, if anybody has some response to the, um, talking about bringing technology into existing conference rooms to norm mixed in-person slash remote meetings. Yeah, I can jump in on this one as well. So this is, this is a huge challenge. Um, it's one that Dr. Cog is facing when, as we go forward and we're trying to figure out um, you know, what our telework policy will look like um, as we develop this new normal. So I think what we're talking about is, you know, for example, if someone does make the decision and is able to return physically to the office, um, but no one else is, and they're still having to um, do meetings virtually through Zoom or another tool, how does that look? And, and how are, um, how can employers really support that situation um, and I'm really I don't I don't have a great answer but but I know that it is something that a lot of employers are struggling with especially as we um, return to the office in limited capacity um, that's a great question I, I I would say that it's something that we are continuing to look into and, and research and and hopefully we can find some good solutions in the future great Okay, I have a question that just came in um, that I'm going to read out word for word. Was there much discussion on employees continuing to mostly telework even after the pandemic? 
Can you talk a little more on how employers plan to resume a quote unquote normal work environment? Will most who do so today continue to telework in two years or will many want to go back to commuting every day? Is it mostly going to be up to the individual employees? Um, I can sort of answer that from some of the survey from some of the survey data. I think um, I think people who have been teleworking for a month or more are now, um, where as they didn't before. I think the survey results are telling us that they're pretty sold on teleworking, and if if it's if they're permitted to do it, they'll continue to do it. I think we saw. On some of the preference questions, uh, would you rather work at home or, or telework? And um, you know, most people prefer to either a mix or working remotely all the time. And I think also um, going forward, I think employers are definitely seeing um, that productivity hasn't suffered, and then in some cases it's actually increased, and that the quality of work has increased. Um, and I think as long as they continue to see that and they see that morale is maintained and, and that um, police don't feel too isolated, I think they'll, uh, I think they'll try and accommodate. I think they'll continue to do that. At least that's the direction the survey results are indicating. Great. I'll jump, I'll jump in as well on that one. I, I, I would say great question about what this is going to look like in two years. I think that that's really still TBD. I think that um, we're seeing that a lot of employers in our region and probably everywhere are really still um, reeling from, from what is happening and what has happened. And so I think that as the dust begins to hopefully settle in the coming months, um, those employers will start to make those decisions. But really what we encourage is, is that they do develop formal telework policies and that they do support that decision from their employees, um, you know, both from an air quality perspective and then from a religious, from an employee satisfaction. Um, it, it, again, it, it benefits employers. So we are really, um, you know, the goal of the Telework Tomorrow program really is to encourage employers to choose to implement these policies. But as far as, you know, exactly what this is going to look like in a couple of years, I, I would say that probably your guess is as good as ours. Um, but but we'll continue to um, educate employers about those options and really support them in what in their decisions. Great, and this ties in pretty perfectly. What type of training does Way to Go provide for staff? And are there best practices from organizations that have had high rates of telework for years you can share? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do have some resources in that toolkit that I mentioned. Um, so if you go and sort of download some of those materials, you'll find some of that. Um, we have FAQs that we use and in, mostly internally, but it really does just, um, we, we have a lot of expertise in the Way to Go partnership on things like telework. Um, our, a lot of our TMA partners have, have really been focusing on telework for many, many years and really are experts in the space. So we really do rely um, on those resources, but we also um, are quick to direct employers to resources like um, the Society of Human Resources Managers, um, because we, we are not 100% um, telework experts and, and we really are learning alongside of a lot of employers. Really what we are here to do is um, is support the decision, is to support healthy commuting decisions, including telework. But, but we certainly do have a number of materials and resources available, um, and, and feel free to go and check those out. Great, thank you. Um, okay, we have a question. Um, seems like with fewer people working from offices moving forward, how should we deal with the possibility of an excess of empty office space as companies cut back on least office space. Do either of you have a reaction to um, to that question? Yes, yeah, so I'll jump in on that one as well. I think that's another really TBD um, question. But as Jim mentioned, um, one of the potential benefits of developing and implementing a telework policy is you know, is cost savings. And, and I'll let Jim speak a little bit more to this maybe, but I know that we had an example of an employer who, who may be uh, reaping that benefit by developing a telework policy. 
Um, I've, yeah, I've been kind of looking at, I've been trying to read as much like through the Wall Street Journal and <clears throat> sources like that on what might be happening. And apparently office space subleases, there are more of those available currently. Um, so that kind of indicates maybe a little less demand for office space. Um, but it, it's hard to say um, long-term how that might affect things. Um, and then the other thing to consider too is employers may, um, I don't know if they'll start to, to build satellite locations for employees so, um, so they don't have large groups of employees all at one place. But um, so I guess I'm saying, I, I don't really know. Um, so like as soon as one one um, employer may have less demand for office space, something new might pop up, which um, creates a demand for that that space that's become available. So that's it's kind of hard to tell at this point. Okay, um, do most employers provide or pay for internet access and equipment for their employees who are teleworking? So I don't know if we have any numbers on um, the percentage of employers that are um, providing internet or, or providing resources, but I think that really to answer that question, um, I would say it's really critical that an employer does develop a solid policy around that. Um, and really that just is, does depend on individual company policy. So um, there, are, there are regulations, of course, around um, what employees can be reimbursed for, for and you know, what can be deducted and, and things like that. But um, as far as what an individual employer provides to their employees, that's, that's really up to the employer and really varies from, from organization to organization. Right, and we, we didn't specifically ask that question in either of the surveys, although we did see that um, having adequate office equipment at home was one of the one of the problems that popped up. So that kind of leads me to believe, or leads one to believe that um, employers aren't currently providing those kinds of, um, aren't currently providing that to their employees to a large degree. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we just have a couple more at this point. Um, do you see any possibility for repurposing old office buildings to residential? Um, any, re any reaction to that? That might be a question that um, we might need to route elsewhere yeah. to um, get kind of a good perspective on. Yeah, so we'll I can't that. really speak to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we covered all of the questions that we have received so far. Um, I'll just give a couple, you know, a minute for additional questions. Um, please note that there will be an email sent out to all attendees with a link to where this recording will be saved. Um, and of course, please reach out to any of us for follow-up questions or to extend the conversation. Again, there will also be a brief survey that will pop up after you exit the webinar, and we use that information um, to for our future MetroVision ID exchanges um, and reach out speaker outreach. I'm getting some questions about copy of the presentation. So, um, yep, we will send that link out. Do you have, uh, Allison, do you have any examples of teleworking policies to share? Great question. Yeah, there's actually, um, if you visit that toolkit, there is um, a template of a, um, just sort of a basic uh, telework policy. Um, there, are, there are multiple templates, but one of those is for a formal policy. Um, of course, again, that would be up to the individual um, employer to sort of make those those unique decisions within that policy, but there is a template available. Okay, and where can the toolkit be found? Um, so Kate, if you want to sort of backtrack on the presentation, um, that link is available there. It's um, waytogo.org slash telework tomorrow. 
Great. And yet yeah, we will also have all these links um, posted to our website as well. So uh, specifically the survey um, results, Jim, uh, my understanding is you will be sharing a PDF of those as well. Right. Um, we have the, um, yeah, we have uh, the slides that are um, <clears throat> for both surveys. And then um, I have a, a little bit more detailed um, re report of the results of the employer survey in a Word doc um, that I can I can share with um, anybody. I, I can just email those to you if you want. Or and sure. we can make I'll include them in the materials that we okay. uh, that we send out to all attendees on this call. Okay. Thank and you then, so much. Um, and if somebody has a question that's not answered in that report, I, of course, I have the data and I can always um, try and find an answer. Sounds good. And just to build on that real quick, Kate, there's actually um, there's another tool available in that toolkit that is a template of a survey. So um, if your organization is looking to develop and implement a policy, really one of our huge recommendations is to find out how your employees um, are managing and what some of their challenges and what the benefits are really uniquely to your organization. So we have a template of a survey um, if that's something that your organization would be interested in also in the toolkit. Um, and in addition, we'd also be happy to help um, help you um, consult on helping you collect data and then also we can help analyze the data too from those surveys. Awesome. Well, we might close up a couple minutes early, um, just in time for lunch. So thank you again to Jim and Allison and uh, Robert for jumping in to um, tackle some of those questions. Um, really appreciate your time and we will see you at our next ID exchange. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Goodbye.